If you clicked on this video, you're most likely trying to win Fantasy League stress-free. It's a good thing you clicked on this video because that is exactly what I'm going to give to you guys, a list of players we need to be buying low on and some possible trade packages you can use to get them on your team. And you guys know me, I absolutely hate to waste people's time in these videos. So let's go ahead and lock in with the very first player to buy low on this year and probably the best buy low right now, T. Higgins. And I'm going to go over this one pretty quick because this is probably the last time we can get him at a good value. And I'm sure you've heard something about him so far this year, but it is already week seven. He's only the wide receiver 69. Last time he played and saw real field time, the Bengals were the worst team in the NFL statistically in every single passing stat. Joe Burrow was not healthy, but then Burrow gets healthy and T. Higgins gets injured. And in week five, he comes back in his first game is essentially a decoy, only seeing 50% of the snaps. And because he wasn't on the field, it led to back-to-back -to -back bad games, and then his bye week in the middle, and just no good fantasy points. So it's just completely tanked his value right now, and you can get him for very, very low. Not to mention the Bengals have one of the easiest fantasy schedules for wide receivers. So if you're looking to get that kind of guy, he is the number one option that you should have. And if you're looking to trade for him, I'd give up a guy like Drake London or even Marquise Brown to get him on my team. There quite literally is not enough stats to tell you about T Higgins because he just hasn't played any games this year. He is probably the most unlucky wide receiver. We drafted him in the second round of drafts for a reason. It is only a matter of time until he becomes untouchable. But if you've made it this far in the video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I know some of you guys aren't, but you already found the page where all the information is at. So you might as well hit that button when it takes two seconds. And we have a must sell high video coming out tomorrow and you don't want to miss that one but another wide receiver we need to be buying low on is Chris Olave and this is a guy that you might be saying how is he a buy low through seven weeks Chris Olave has been the wide receiver 21 and he's relatively inconsistent so the Olave owners might be open to any kind of trade options and this is where we take advantage and the reason we want to be buying low on him is because his inconsistency isn't his fault it's more of Derek Carr and let me explain why Derek Carr has been dealing with a whole bunch of injuries to his throwing arm since week three and if we look at Olave's chart you can pretty much tell which weeks Derek Carr was dealing Dealing with injury and they line up pretty perfectly but the thing is Derek Carr's injury takes usually about a month to come back from and he's been playing through it. Olave has been seeing elite target share top five in the NFL but he just hasn't been able to do much with it. Targets are the number one thing we look for in wide receivers that keeps them consistent and he's probably at his floor right now with an injured Derek Carr and I can't believe how underreported this Derek Carr injury is. It's probably because he's playing through it but it is a real problem. As Carr gets healthier which he has been over the past two weeks Chris Olave is going to be untouchable and he has an insanely easy fantasy schedule before his bye week so if you can get him do it sooner rather than later i would trade jordan addison for him james cook guys like that or even any kind of package you could get for him is anything that i would do but another guy we need to be going after a running back before he gets relevant again is james connor he is one of the best buy low candidates right now simply because kyler murray is coming back in a matter of weeks even less than that possibly and he's going to completely elevate this offense and it's not like james connor has been bad by any means in all of his four starting games he's led the team in targets out of the back field and a bunch of rushes he gets 20 touches a game on average i know when a starting running back goes out for a little while especially on ir we look at all the backups and think they're a viable option season long when they're just not demarcado and even keontae ingram are not going to see any kind of long-term snaps it's hard to visualize that right now but they are nowhere on james connor's level and especially now that this team isn't in tank mode they are going to consider giving these guys a role when you have a clear top running back in james connor he was a top 15 running back before injury he averaged 12 fantasy points a game again he saw pretty much 20 20 touches a game. The James Conner owner right now might not be able to hold out for another couple weeks or they just need some points now and they might be worried about DeMarcado having a real role since it's been so long since we saw him play. So all of this contributes into a great reason why we should buy low where we can. And another wide receiver I quickly want to talk about as a buy low is similar to the James Conner situation is Marquise Brown. This is a much better buy low situation and again probably one of the best of the video. Brown has been decent so far. He's coming off two back-to-back -back pretty bad games and a lot of Marquise Brown owners are kind of done with him now because the offense isn't the best he had a couple bad games his touchdowns are going down but his targets and involvement in this offense is still 1000 percent there he's averaging nine targets a game and that is one of the highest in the nfl but a lot of this inconsistency is coming from josh dobbs just getting worse as the season goes on last week he had 33 pass attempts only completed 19 of them for 140 yards and there's only 149 passing yards in the entire offense it's hard for anybody to be viable but he still has an elite target share of 29 percent it's been around 30 the entire season that is very, very high. But lucky for him, Kyler Murray is coming back into this offense. And if anybody's going to benefit from this, it will be him because he is an elite fantasy quarterback. He's going to elevate the entire offense and fantasy receivers. Let me remind you, last season before Kyler Murray and Marquise Brown both went down with injury, he was averaging 18 fantasy points a game and 10 targets. And that would have been top 10. But everybody's forgetting about the entire narrative we had coming into this year that D-Hop is gone and he is the clear-cut wide receiver one. No question, he has to be pretty 
primed for some kind of breakout, but for some reason, everybody forgets that that's what's happening. He has one of the easiest, if not the easiest, fantasy football playoff schedule. He gets Philadelphia that allow the second most fantasy points to opposing wide receivers, Chicago, and the 49ers, who are both top 10 in points allowed, surprisingly. He can get Marquise Brown for anybody around Josh Downs, Nico Collins, Cortland Sutton, even. Any packages of these guys or any combination you want to throw at him, you most definitely should do because you're potentially getting a top 15 wide receiver for the rest of the season. But looking at the next buy low candidate for this video, this isn't the traditional buy low, it is Bijan Robinson. And the reason I say he's a buy low is because this is quite literally the lowest we're going to get him all season. He just came off a bad fluke game. He didn't play. He saw 10% of the snaps. He had one carry. And this had everything to do with his health and nothing to do with his actual talent or this offense phasing him out. Apparently, he was dealing with a concussion. He didn't feel good. He wasn't good to go, but they just decided not to put it on the report. He hasn't had an amazing game since week four against the Jags. So Bijan owners are kind of forgetting why they drafted him with a top 10 pick. But with that being said, he was a top 10 pick for a reason. This offense is only giving him the ball more. He's getting more involved with more snaps, more touches, and he is an elite receiving back. It's also worth noting that he has a top three fantasy football schedule for fantasy running backs for the rest of the season and for the fantasy playoffs specifically. So if that's something you really need on your team, go ahead and shoot for these stars with him there. But he also has a bye week in week 11, and we all know that teams get their rookies more involved after their bye weeks. This is the last time you're going to get him this low after a 0.3 point fantasy performance. Some potential packages you can use to get him on your team are guys in the level of Raheem Mostert, Jameer Gibbs, Adam Thielen, any of those specific guys themselves or any package around that you want to give, get Bijan on your team. But I also want to be going out and getting David Montgomery specifically, especially if you're not in PPR leagues. Yes, Jameer Gibbs came out here last week and had a career game, 30 fantasy points and a touchdown. All of the hype is around him and David Montgomery is out for a possible another two weeks. But a lot of David Montgomery owners are kind of getting scared right now because they think this is the resurgence of Jameer Gibbs. This is what we've finally been waiting for. The breakout is here. And the Lions just got shut out by the Ravens. So there's a whole bunch of negative press and emotion around this guy and this offense. So we need to take advantage of this while we can because he's still a top running back rest of season and this is his backfield still. He's controlled the snap share for this offense and he is the goal line back that is never going to change. He's always going to have some kind of upside but the Lions have one of the easiest remaining schedules for fantasy football running backs and he has one of the best offensive lines to work behind and he's on a run for his squad. This team ranks top 10 in every single rushing stat imaginable. They are efficient. They like to run the ball and once the Lions get inside the 20 and are in the red zone, Jared Goff essentially is just out there to look pretty. They run it every single time. You could easily get him for a guy like James Cook, Raheem Mostert, and even some kind of package around Donta Foreman now that he has really high value. But another guy I want us all to be buying low on and getting on our squad is DJ Moore. And this is a guy that we've seen time and time again is quarterback proof. It doesn't matter who he's playing with. We've seen week in and week out that that doesn't matter. He's averaged eight targets a game with Justin Fields backup and anybody can really support him. He's had decent fantasy yardage and games, but he just hasn't had a breakout game since the commanders in week five. He leads this team in targets by a mile. He is the clear number one option and Justin Fields is going to come back soon, which will elevate this offense regardless of how bad his backup has been playing recently. But again, he's got a great schedule. He was a top 10 wide receiver in the back end before Justin Fields was injured. He has amazing yards after the catch ability. You can get him on your team for guys like George Pickens, Tyler Lockett, Drake London, Alexander Madison, any of that level of player, you can get him on your team pretty easily. But another buy low we need to be taking advantage of is Devonta Smith. And this is a guy that everybody is probably starting to get pretty mad at. There's no doubt that he's been underperforming this year. He is the wide receiver 29 so far and he's only averaging four receptions a game, nothing near what we drafted him for. If you look at his chart, there is a whole bunch of inconsistency. People really just do not want to have to deal with this. But at the end of the day, he's still in a top offense that are top 10 in pretty much every single passing stat imaginable, passing attempts, passing touchdowns, everything. His volume for targets are still decently high and he has so much potential just sitting in this offense. He's put up three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back single digit fantasy performances. Trust me, people are upset. His value has gone lower. He has a great matchup this week coming up against the Washington Commanders secondary who allow pretty much every wide receiver to go for over 100 yards on them. They played them the other week. He had a decent game. Go buy low on him while you still can. And if you can bite the bullet on some potential bad weeks here and there before he comes into his own and truly breaks out, he's going to be a top 15 wide receiver. But we can go ahead and get him on our team with a package like Zach Moss and Kareem Hunt or even just Jerry Judy, Jacoby Myers. Any combination of those guys will get him on your team and you should do it sooner rather than later. That is going to finish off this video. If you guys have any kind of questions about trades, start sets, any of that, drop it in the comments. I will be answering all of them and I'll see you guys in the must sell video coming out tomorrow.